This is a video on how to recognize a function in a table or graph by determining whether or not there is only one output for each input value on the Math GED test. All right, so a function has only one output for each input. So if you look at this diagram here, we got the input is a family member's name. So in other words, it's a person, right? And over here, the output is their age. And so this is a great example that I often use with my students to always come back to. And if you think about it, a person can only be one age, meaning an input should only have one output, right? It can only be one age, but many people can be the same age. So if you look here at Sam, Nina, and Paul, they are all 47. That is okay. Um, many people can be the same age, but you can't have one person be many ages, right? That doesn't make sense. That would be one person, one input, having many outputs. It's no longer a function, okay? So let's do some examples that you might see similar on the GED to try to learn this. So does the following table represent a function? Well, let's look at the steps for determining this first. The first thing is look for duplicate or the same input. Um, and if you look here, we have one twice, okay? And therefore, it's a duplicate. And so if there are duplicates, make sure that they have the same output. Well, this one is outputting zero. This one is outputting five. So if the duplicate inputs have different outputs, it is not a function. So is the following table a function? No. All right, let's do another example. Does the following table represent a function? So again, first thing you want to look for is duplicates. All right, there are no duplicate inputs. So by default, no duplicates, then by default the data means it is a function, or at least you don't have enough data to prove that it's not a function. So um, this is often confused, students get confused by this one. To use the example of someone ages, let's say these are each individual students, right? This could be a classroom full of four-year-olds, like a preschool or something. That's okay. Again, what we don't want is a child being two different ages or a person being two different ages. So yes, this does represent a function. All right, so here we have, um, again, it's sort of a similar, it's just not actually in uh, a table format, but you want to look for duplicates. There's actually no duplicates. We do have um, two different inputs outputting a negative one. Again, that's okay. That's like two different people being the same age. Same here with four. Two different numbers outputting four. That's okay. This is a function. Okay. All right, what about here? Again, look for duplicates. We do have two duplicates here. Do they have the same output? No, so therefore it is not a function. Not a function. All right, so sometimes you might get a question, or at least the says, does the following graph represent a function? And so there is a way of determining this. I'll talk about each of these graphs, but what you're going to complete to determine if a graph is a function is the vertical line test. You're going to imagine there's like a line going over these um, uh, graphs, if you will. And as long as there's only one intersection or point, it is a function. If there's more than one intersection or point, it is not a function. So if you look here, this crosses here and here. Right? If we go do another line, this crosses here and here. This, if x is your input, right? Here's your input. And we are actually outputting twice. We have two different outputs. Same with this one. If here's our input, x is our input, right? We are outputting once and twice. Same over here, once and twice. That's not okay, or at least it's not a function. All right, so let's do some examples here. Is this one a function? Well, if we do our line test, here's our input. It looks like it's outputting once. Let's do another line test. And this looks like it's outputting only once. Let's do another line test. Again, outputting only once. So it, this is a function. Now, what sometimes if it's even not a line, they ask for what value of x is not part of the function. Like maybe it's multiple choice, right? 
maybe you know it looks like this and you have to choose maybe it's like one three four and six and so one outputs one two outputs two three outputs three four outputs four but six outputs two and it outputs six so six does not represent a function it has two outputs for the one input again um, X is the input and Y is the output. Now, what if they give you a table and they say complete the table so that it represents a function? Um, so, let's say they already have some numbers on here for you like 8 and 5. Well, this could be 7 and 6. If you, so they might tell you not to duplicate, but if you put a 7 here, you have to put a 6 here in order for it to be a function. If you put uh, like a four here, now it's no longer a function, all right? So um, it is maybe best, let's say you have like five and 12 and two. By default, since this is the input, it doesn't matter what other numbers you put here. You could put a six here. Again, because this would be two different inputs, two different people having the same age, that's okay. What we don't want is the same person having two different ages. So you could pick really any numbers for the rest of this. So uh, I hope this helps you. Good luck on the Math GED. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please like this video if you found it valuable and subscribe if you would like to see more videos like these. Visit the link below to passthegd.org to see more videos and learning opportunities that will help you get the highest passing score on the GED. And good luck.